Hi and welcome, I am Friar Tuck and this is my epoch. And so today, what I'm gonna be talking about is what I like to call hobo forensics. When you're getting ready to go camping and you're getting ready to uh, you know, find yourself a sleep spot for the night, you kind of have to uh, sit back and you know, scout out an area. You should always scout it out a little bit before, that way you know what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I scout out an area how I do forensics and find myself a sleeping spot. So right now I am in Covington, which is right across the, the bridge from Cincinnati. So I come over here every once in a while. Um, and as you see, there's a nice little park behind me. This is where I'm at. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna show you some stuff and then that way it'll help you. So uh, I did a poll not too long ago or over the last couple of days and you guys have said that you want some hobo how-tos. No, you can get a lot more if you go over to my Patreon. It's $10 a month for hobo tutorials. Uh, and I'll start doing uh, a lot more in-depth tutorials there since I know that's something that you guys will like. Uh, and I will bring some of them up, out over here. But if you want more tutorials than what I do here on YouTube, you are going to have to go over to uh, my Patreon and uh, do the $10 subscription. And you also get the behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and get into the video. A lot of hobos will sleep on concrete just because for some reason psychologically that means it's a safe spot uh, because it used to be really bad uh, you get in a lot of trouble even go to jail if you got caught sleeping in the parks which means sleeping on on the dirt so this when I stayed here one night this is an area right here where I saw quite a few hobos kind of coming up under here because it's got it's got cover and uh, it's got a little bit of shade and a little bit of seclusion as you see you kind of you got this But if you sleep behind one of these pillars, then uh, You've got some privacy, but and you can be seen from that area But usually you got to be out of here early a lot of other people I will see them sleeping on the benches because it used to be back in the day That if you were sleeping on a bench the police wouldn't mess with you only if you were sleeping on the ground and then straight over here um, this is another camping spot now you can always tell the good camping spots when uh, it's fairly clean so as you can see you got a fence here right but if you go around the corner all the way to the end of that fence line you can actually come back through here now some people are more paranoid than others but um, they will you know anything to get them give them some sort of security and a barrier between them and some potential threat but you can come back through here and I will show you where I slept here in just a second. But as you see, it's clean. Now there are hobos that do sleep back here, but because it's such a prime spot and they don't want to blow it up, they will get rid and they will clean up after themselves. Uh, and plus the church probably has people that comes and cleans up after themselves. But you see that spot right there where the, the sun is. Now there's a little concrete slab there. Um, not only that, you're, uh, you're at the end of a cul-de-sac uh, you've got it. It's like a steep hill to go down there and uh, This offers quite a bit of protection and if you look nobody can see you from the uh, From from the park and so this gives you a little bit of privacy The only people that will see you are people that, that live in that cul-de-sac But again, you can kind of mask yourself a little bit and you're gonna have to be up around six o'clock in the morning one of the things about being a hobo or homeless or transient nomad, whatever you want to call yourself, is you kind of learn the little nicks and crannies. So as you see here to my left is the beginning of a bike path. Now this bike path kind of cuts you, cuts through the city in the back way uh, and uh, it's right there next to the freeway. And this is how they turn uh, land that they cannot use into something that's usable. So what will happen here, so let's go down the stairs here real quick. And let's see here. So as you see, the path just goes on. There's nature there. You can probably see the, the cars from there. So you, you've got that as a barrier uh, between you and the rest of society. But if you, if you look right here, that's where we're going that is a like a, a sit spot but anyways we're gonna go over there real quick and i'll show you that as you see i'm coming around the bend and i'm coming up to 
my first stop. Now, this is mainly a camp spot, not where people sleep, but you know, this is a place where you can sit back if you want to have a beer in private, you want a toke in private, something like that. Because if you, let me get here under the shade so I can see better with the camera. But as you see, you've got a nice little log there to sit on. There was some stuff here. As you see, you know, you can see some trash here. So you know, like, you know, you see that spoon there. That tells you that people have been eating here. It means that homeless have been here because they always stop and they always eat. But then if you look at the top of the area, so uh, going up that hill, you see that path there, okay? So that is your point of, uh, of reference. So if you want to, you know, keep an eye on traffic that's coming, you're protected from the other direction, but from this direction, you're exposed. And this direction, as you see, they got to come around trees and a bend and all kinds of other stuff. So this, when you're looking for a place to just hang out for a minute and get some peace and quiet, uh, it, it's always about access points and uh, point of view or, or line of sight because for the, the average individual, you're coming out to get privacy. You don't get very much privacy and something you're doing, you know, you may not want other people to see. So this is something that you do here. As you see, I'm coming down the path. I may be 300 feet from where I was. Let me show you here. So you see right about there in the center of the screen, that's where I was, okay? And as you see, look at all this. Now, if you are able to see inside, you can see stuff. Now, the camera isn't gonna catch as much as you would, but you see how open that is and everything like that, okay? So there's actually a path down in here, but as you can tell, this used to be a big camp, okay? And I'll show you here in a second when we get to the path. But uh, the first time I was here, there was a duffel bag that was just laying there on the ground. Now, chances are a guy got picked up in the middle of the night. So these are things that you're paying attention to. So this place here was quite trashed up. Somebody has come and cleaned it up a lot. But as you see, this is a nice little alcove, okay? You can kind of sleep back here uh, if nobody knows that you're back here, if you're not advertising that you're back here. And if the police aren't back here searching, you know, you have this area right here. And this is what it looks like coming out. Now it does leave you vulnerable, but there are spots such as, if you look in here, there's a, there's a path, you can almost see it. I can see it, but you see where that log is back there? That's a place where you would sleep uh, and be fine. Uh, you know, you kind of want to, you know, immerse yourself in the bushes a little bit uh, because you don't want to be seen by the police. Think of it like this. You're playing a game of hide and go seek. And as you see, this is all the trash that was, that hasn't been picked up yet. But you can tell that somebody's been here. Uh, they did a lot of eating. They camped. They drank. Uh, they probably even made a fire because you have firewood here, you know, and so this might be a hot spot just because of that. They don't like it when you do a fire, even if you know what you're doing, especially within city limits, just because of the risks that, that go along with it. But this is a typical uh, hobo campsite that has been cleaned up. And again, they've been moved out and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And you'll find spots like this. You just keep walking along any bike path, any trail, anything like that, anything where there is forest, and if you look, you will be able to find things like this, okay? And the reason why this is important to you is for two reasons. One, when you when you go and look for a, a place to sleep for the night, you need to be secure, which means you're trying not to get harassed by police. So if you're a prepper and you're bugging out, or whether you're homeless and you're in an area that isn't kind to the homeless, <clears throat> you know, these, these are some tricks and, and things that you need to learn because one, it's okay to sleep in a place where other homeless have slept, okay? There, there's safety in it because somebody else has already explored it. But you also wanna make sure that, you know, that, that the police haven't done a, a run through of this and you'll be able to see signs and evidence of it, you know, such as the cleaned up campsite. But this was much dirtier and it looks like they've really taken, somebody else has come back here and, and done some cleanup, okay? But the, the other thing is, is you're looking for a place to sleep you're, you're looking for a place that is 
uh, that, that other people have slept before that has kind of already been tried and, and tested. But again, you got to know what's going on with the local police in your area, whether or not they do park sweeps. Uh, some places, apparently, they're not doing it. Like, let's say uh, in Cincinnati, they're not doing it, but that's a larger city than Covington. Okay, this is across the river. This is more of an upscale city. Um, you know, it is what it is. But um, with that being said, uh, this is my my tutorial on doing forensics and why you need to do it. it it's just so that you can find a place to stay. And also, you don't want to be staying in a super dirty place anyways. If you do, you want to clean it up. Uh, if you want to keep the police from messing with you, if you keep your site this clean at all times, which means you leave zero footprint, I mean, you're going to have a little bit left behind. It's, it's, it's inevitable. But if you work on leaving zero footprint, you could come back to this site every night and they wouldn't know it because the thing is, is as people are walking by and they see this this conglomeration of trash and and just disgust they they start calling it in and they say hey you know there's there's some people living in the woods it's disgusting they got trash all over the place and what ends up happening is um is is then the police come and then they got to run you out and that whole thing and i don't think that the police really want to do it it's just part of their job so therefore they do it uh i i think a, a lot of it is they would rather be dealing with with uh you know the more meat and potatoes of the job than dealing with the homeless but you know we do things that just bring their attention and so if you're trying to keep your keep their attention away from you make sure you keep a clean camp something like this you can come back to every night uh, but the thing is is you know when people see that it's an open area and that it's clean they might also be coming back to it because you know part of seeing a trashed area is it lets you know that somebody's staying there but you kind of got to figure out like how old is that trash? Is that new trash? Is that trash that's been here over the last couple of days? Do these people come here once in a while? You know, you kind of got to scope out a spot, especially if you want a really good spot. <coughs> okay. So this is my tutorial, my, my hobo how-to. And uh, I hope you guys learned something. And I will see you in the next video.